and welcome to another episode of Keep It Locked with me, Simon Hill, as always. Before we get into this episode, don't forget, follow Keep It Locked across social media. We're on Twitter, at Keep It Locked Pod. You can also follow me with a load of randomness, including, well, wrestling stuff, gaming stuff. I'll be Simon H. Official across Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And we've also launched our brand new official Keep It Locked merch. Head over to My Wrestle Merch. Pins and Knuckles have rebranded their wrestling site, and I'm in good company there. Tony Storm, Morgan, Flash Morgan, Webster, amongst Chris Ridgway, many others. So, uh, yeah, I'm very privileged to be on there. So, go and check out the brand new merch. It's awesome. Right, this episode is with an incredible talent. She has done so much. The alpha female, Jazzy Gabbert. Not only in the ring was she a powerhouse, but she has recently got into acting, you know, being on TV, even on the likes of the German version of Take Me Out. We talk about that in detail, trust me, it's incredible. <laughs> uh, we talk about so much, her time in NXT UK as Ginny's bodyguard, her matchups with some of the most iconic wrestlers from the Japan scene, WWE and so much more. It's all here in this packed episode with the alpha female. It's Keep It Locked with Jazzy Gabba. Uh, thank you so much, first of all, for accepting my invitation uh, to be thank here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, you're currently in a hotel in Germany, ready for some business yes. meetings. You've been, yes. you know, relaxing with the rest of us for five months, but things are starting to pick back up for you at the moment. Thankfully, yes. <laughs> uh, so I want to get into your career. You've got such a storied career in and out of the ring. There's so much going on. Uh, you know, some fun stuff. People may not know that you were on a, an episode of Take Me Out, the German version. <laughs> yes. Um, what, how did that come around, first of all? Um, well, yeah, I had a neck injury in 2018, so I needed the time to recover. And then I was a little bit bored. I couldn't do, uh, you know, any wrestling stuff. So I was writing all kinds of TV stations and say, hey, do you want me? Do you want me? And then this one show, Take Me Out, called me up and said, hey, you want to be on it? And first I was like, oh, I'm not sure because all these girls, you know, like super skinny and they're like super posh and they're like Barbie girls. And I'm like, oh, I don't fit in there. Um, but then because I was bored, <laughs> I said, OK, <laughs> let's do it. And then I ended up on the show and I was like for eight shows there and it was super fun. Yeah, it got wow. me a lot out of it. <laughs> and what are, your, what, what are your best memories that you'd taken away from that experience? Oh man, like everything. I mean, I I made I made new friends. You know, there are some girls I still talk to, like even like two years later now or one and a half years later. Well, I didn't get a date, unfortunately. Um, but I got a lot of crazy messages. I got a lot of proposals, even marriage proposals. Wow. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, and I was able to, you know, to say some silly stuff, something like, for example, there was this one guy. He was really tiny, and I press the buzzer, buzzer and then the, the commentator came to me and said hey Jesse why and I said well for his own safety so I don't break him you know and everyone was <laughs> laughing their ass off <laughs> yeah it was so much fun wow so any aspirations to come over to the UK and do that sort of stuff the Love Islands the Big Brothers oh, you know what? You know? I would love to I would love to oh Big Brother totally you can sign me up for it um <laughs> but to take me out in, in the in the UK I'm not sure because it's weird, like I speak English and I think I speak really well English, but I don't understand what they're saying. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> what did they just say? And everything is so quick on Take Me Out, you know, so I'm like, mm, maybe not this show. <laughs> Pad Paddy McGuinness, who's the host of the UK version, he's got a very unique accent. Uh, there's not many mm. people that in England that can understand him, so you're not oh, alone on thank that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I was worried. I'm like, oh, I need to practice more English. <laughs> <laughs> um. Your wrestling career, uh, I mean, just your career in general is so decorated and you've had so many amazing experiences, uh, not just obviously former WWE Impact and Stardom, but you were also a powerlifter, bodybuilder and mixed martial artist as well. Was it something that you wanted to get into as a child or did you just kind of fall into it? 
I was totally fall into it. Like, I swear to God, in sports, I never had, like, a good grade. Like, I was really bad. And most of them, I was ashamed. Like, I didn't even want to dress up to go to the sports class, you know. Um, yeah, I was really bad. <laughs> so, and it was, it's a miracle that I'm a professional athlete. Like, if I speak to people from back then in the days, they're like, no way. <laughs> so, yeah, I really, I just fall into it. Yeah. When wow. I started wrestling, I was, like, so skinny. I was, yeah, I wasn't an athlete at all. And I'm still, to this day, I hate speed. I can't run really fast. Like, I remember in Stardom, we did, like, these races where we had to run really fast. And I was so scared that I trip over, you know, and I'm a big girl, you know. <laughs> um, or or in, in NXT UK, we had to training and we had to do, like, hard wheels and stuff like this. And I'm not capable of doing stuff like this. I can lift people up and throw them down. That's, like, my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you were trained as well in, in wrestling by uh, the likes of Joey Legend. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and get, get his guy's name right, so apologies if I don't. Uh, Mural uh, Bosporus. Murad Bosporus. Yeah, yeah. Murad Bosporus. It's a Turkish wrestler, yeah. Uh, and a few others from GWF. Yeah. How was the training when you first started getting into wrestling? Yeah, when I first started, it was so different than what it is today. Like um, we had in Germany, maybe I think three or four wrestling schools all over Germany. So it was not really popular. And it was a boys club, you know, like where the big boys played. There was no room for girls. So I went to like I went to a show and I saw two girls there and I really liked what they're doing. And that was the first time when I thought, hey, maybe I give it a try. So I go to the wrestling school and they immediately say, no, we don't want you here. So I had to go there like every every day, three months in a row and then begging them, please train me. Um, keep in mind, I was like super skinny. I was super shy. I was pale. Like I was not an athlete at all, not a superstar, nothing. Um, and they were like, mm, nah, we don't know. No, we don't want you here. But I keep begging them. So after three months time, they were like, okay, come on. Um, later they told me it's just because they wanted my money you know like wrestling <laughs> training costs money you know yeah um and then they beat me up like badly like wow like I had black eye and I don't know like it was really bad but I stayed and then like after a while I say well you're not going to leave aren't you I'm like no I want to be a wrestler <laughs> um and then they told us also like it's a man's sport so you have to do exactly the same things like the guys like for example the push-ups you cannot do it on the knees or you have to do the same amount like back in the day we had to do like 100 at a time and there was no excuse for us girls not to do the same and I really appreciate that because now looking back that was maybe what saved my career you know that that made me stand out so much and, and after a while I went to the gym you know and I started training and I started loving it to build muscles and build also confident you know like with muscles with training everything you build a lot of confidence self-confidence and I think all that together helped me to become the alpha female absolutely and you've also been very open on how women were judged uh, in wrestling you know around the time mm -hmm. when you started training mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. A huge part where, you know, entering as a, as a female in a male dominated sport at that mm -hmm. time was very yeah. difficult. So how did you find that? Was it a st constant struggle for you? Well, at the beginning, absolutely. I mean, when I started wrestling, um, my trainer from GWF, they told me my gimmick, what I have to wear. And it was very short. Like I have to have a short shorts and really short you know, like, and I, I was like a stripper. That was my first gimmick and I hated it. I'm like, what the hell? And they said, because you can't wrestle, like no one can wrestle the first year because you can't wrestle. You have to have a gimmick, you know, which will people distract you from you cannot wrestle. Um, and so the first five years I have to tour around with that all around Europe. Um, and even the promoter says, if you don't wear this, we don't want you here. Like I had this girl called Wesner. She always had like long shorts and they preferred me over her because I was like sexual. And I was like, that's not cool. You know, like no, she no. was so much better than me, you know, like she was this really bad as a girl, like, so, yeah, it was strange. And then, like, a few years later, uh, I had a match with Jenny Stewarden. And Jenny Stewarden, she's, like, an Olympic ring, uh, wrestler. And she's she's amazing. She's not in the business anymore. But we were backstage at the American wrestling show. So the Americans came over to France, and we had a match there. 
So the ring announced that he went out to the ring and he said, okay, ladies and gentlemen, now female wrestling. And everyone starts chanting, we want boobies, we want boobies. And Jenny and I were looking at each other. We're like, we can't deliver. I'm sorry. (laughs) And and then we went out there, you know, and we didn't even lock up, like nothing. We just looking at each other, not even lock up. And they started chanting, you can't wrestle. So they didn't even give us a chance, you know, and I thought I was really sad. But this is what they've been watching on TV, you know, like WWE, they had these brawn panties matches. So, of course, these fans were expecting that from independent wrestling, too. So it was really difficult. But you managed to 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 get through it, and you eventually became uh, part of a huge w- women's movement uh, within wrestling, uh, including in WWE, which we'll get to in in a little while. But you know, you went through a lot of struggles back uh, mm. in your early days, especially growing up in Germany. Um, you know, a lot of family struggles. You know, you were in a house surrounded with siblings, uh, adopted into a family. Was wrestling that escape? from reality absolutely for you. yeah yeah absolutely i always say wrestling saved my life like you have to imagine like i come into this family and they have three sons and they desperately want to have a baby girl you know so of course the first two years i got spoiled you know i got all everything and my brother started to hating me of course you know like this new person comes in and she gets everything and they get nothing but they beat me up all the time you know we're fighting for the remote control and everything um just fun and games you know nothing serious don't worry <laughs> Um, And then my parents had to find out that I'm not a typical girl because I was, you know, also having trouble in school. I'm defending myself. I I punched one boy the other day and then I had to go to the principal, you know, and my parents had to pick me up and that ruined kind of everything for them. Um, And then I found wrestling and they hated it. They hated it so much that I was into wrestling. They wanted me to be into ballet, you know, I went to dancing. Um, and then they tried again and had a baby girl. So I was hated by my brothers and hated by my adopted family. So I was like in the middle of something. And then also the financial struggle started, you know, and they started to divorce. So all this shit going around me and me being so weird and strange and being bullied in school, wrestling was just the perfect escape. In, In wrestling, they were colorful, they were loud and funny and strong. And this was all I wanted to be. I wanted to be strong, you know, I wanted to be loved, you know, like Hulk Hogan, he was loved so much. So I think that's why I fall so deeply in wrestling. And who was it who stood out for you? You know, you you would say you spoke about all these colorful characters. Who was it who stood out as those ultimate colorful characters? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit older, so I'm talking about old school. I'm talking about like uh, Hulk Hogan and Sting back in the days, and Macho Man. They were like these three. They were so colorful, and then it was like perfect timing, you know, like. Um, then was the time when NWO came and Hulk Hogan portrayed everyone and you know I felt like oh my god how could you do that and then I was in love with the character Sting when he became all black and he was like hiding and I felt it it was like me I felt like I was betrayed I was like oh you know and I was like I'm hiding up the ceiling (laughs) so yeah he was like that was like my childhood you know like my teenagehood (laughs) with Sting being the crow basically Wow. Wow. What a story. And one of your new ambitions is to go around uh, schools and reach out to children that have been through yes. similar experiences as, uh, as yes. yourself, uh, you know, when you were t- 10 years old and growing up. Is this something yeah. that you're obviously continu- continuously pursuing? Absolutely. That's my dream. Like, that's why I always wanted to go to WWE, because I wanted, I needed to make it, to make it kind of I mean, I know I'm successful and everyone I'm talking to say like, hey, you're amazing. But I kind of need a WWE to make this story complete because I when I was 16, like my parents, they throw me out. So I lived like for three months on the streets. So I was really at the rock button. Right. So I want to go to schools and talk to these young people who, you know, the refugees, kids or the kids who have single parents, you know, it looks really bad right now and and you feel like you have nothing and I don't know that the world is not fair but I mean I made it so you can made it too like just believe in yourself and work hard have respect respect is most important and just don't do any stupid stuff 
Like I was in a position I could have, you know, steal stuff or uh, do criminal stuff, but I never, like I never punched anyone. I never got in trouble with police because I always had to train to go to WWE and I knew I need a clean record, you know? And so I don't know, I want to go to schools and, and inspire, inspire them, you know, and say, Hey, you're at this really bad moment, but it don't have to last forever. You can make something out of a life. Even it seems really impossible right now. Wow, such an inspiration. Um, and we're going to go into your wrestling career. So the, your mm-hmm. escape was wrestling and you, you ended up, you know, getting there, fighting through the various barriers that, that you had to fight through. And you would eventually go on to debut in April of uh, 2007, was it, I think? 2001. 2001, sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it was April 7th, 2001, uh, for, the, uh, for the NWA Germany European Women's Championship as well. So how was that first experience stepping in the ring, uh, you know, for such a big moment for you in your career? Um, well, again, I was, I was not me to this time, like not me, what you see right now. So I was just like super shy and I had like this weird gimmick. I had to dance out there and there was maybe like 20 people watching us. So (laughs) I can't remember exactly everything. I, I guess it was a nice feeling, you know, to finally reach something, but also like all my career, I was always scared. Like, that's so weird. Like like till this day, like I had a wrestling show in Italy the, the few days ago. I was not scared, but like nervous, you know, like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Like, oh, and I guess that's always like when I go to Stardom, when I go to the May Young Classic, like last week, it's always this super nervous feeling. But I think that means it means to you something, you know, like if it would, if you would not care, you wouldn't have any feelings at all. And I think if you stop having this kind of fear, <laughs> then you should stop wrestling at all. Very similar quote from Ozzy Osbourne, the lead singer of Black Sabbath. He used to say, you know, once you stop being nervous going on stage, that's when, you know, it's time to quit. Absolutely. Uh, (laughs) So it's it's key. But, you know, you would go through um, several promotions in Europe very early on, including France and Spain. What was it like going to these different countries, wrestling in various cultures? Did that teach you a lot about the, the, the industry itself? Mm, absolutely but not just the industry itself but also about humans and about the show industry like in every country but also like in every city you wrestle it's so different it's same in the UK I wrestled a lot in the UK and it's so different going to London or to Manchester or Liverpool it's every time a different crowd you know um but I have the greatest memory in in France because I was always the heel because I'm German and they hate Germans <laughs> so it, it was amazing um I only can remember one thing like I was already the alpha female I, I transitioned to my new gimmick and we had like this huge show there were like 10,000 fans and it was like a tour so we had like I think like 10 or 11 shows and it was always the same build up. It's like a huge setup with um, gladiator style. So whenever I go out there, I felt like that was like my impression that they were laughing at me. And then at the fourth show or something, I said to the promoter, oh, I don't want to wrestle anymore. They're laughing at me all the time. And he's like, what? No, 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 girl. He said, next time you go out there and you listen carefully. So the fifth show, I go out there and this time I listen and they weren't laughing. They were making this kind of noise. Oh, you know, like they were surprised and I'm like, that's awesome. (laughs) Because usually they were really like booing me all the time and like they were even spitting at me and they're throwing stuff in the ring. That's only in France. And that's amazing (laughs) because that's the goal, right? To get like emotions out of the people. And my job is to make them angry, right? (laughs) So that was really amazing. And you clearly succeeded. And you mentioned the UK and you did come over to the UK uh, mm-hmm. where you started wrestling for Pro Wrestling Eve in 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, managed yeah. to get in the ring with some great talent there. The likes of Nikki Cross, who obviously was mm-hmm. Nikki Storm back then, I think. Uh, Kaylee mm-hmm. Ray, Hakira Shida and so many more. What was it like wrestling mm-hmm. for, for Pro Wrestling Eve? They care so much about female wrestling and and in a different way, they they don't care about the looks or, you know, like they care really for our athleticism and 
the, our characters, you know, and they come up with so crazy ideas. Like <laughs> one day they brought a car door to the ring and they said, lift them up, Jesse. And I have like the most amazing picture out of it. And they create memories and memories stay forever in your heart. You know, um, when I won the, the Pro Wrestling Eve Championship, my God, that's like, I think I will never forget that in the Delphi Center for Brit Rest Festival. Yeah, I love pro wrestling even. I love Dan Reed. Like he's really taking a lot of effort in it and he tries to give us the best, you know, and I appreciate it a lot. They're, they're a great company. And that must have been one of those things for you. Obviously, you know, we go back to that, that past where you were talking about the struggles of, of women getting into wrestling, that you mm -hmm. had this promotion just dedicated to mm -hmm. women's wrestling that changed everything. They gave me a big, big, how you know, stage, you know, they... They awoke in the alpha female. Without them, without Pro Wrestling Eve, I couldn't have gone to um, Stardom, for example, because in Pro Wrestling Eve, they booked the uh, the Japanese talent, right? And then talent scouts came over. When I had my match with Hik Hikaru Shida, um, talent scouts saw me and they were really impressed with me. And then that's how I went to Japan. You know, without um, Pro Wrestling Eve, it wouldn't have been even possible. So I thank them from the bottom of my heart. And that is a great transition for us to go to Japan. You hold Japan very close to your heart. You have wrestled there uh, multiple times uh, over the years. Uh, and again, going against some incredible names, the likes of Io Shirai, um, uh, Takahashi as well, and so many more. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about Kairi Japan. <laughs> yeah, Kairi Sane, who, who has just mm -hmm. uh, left WWE. But, you know, mm -hmm. what was it like for you going up against these guys, learning again in Japan? Because every wrestler wants to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. Well, I went 2012 to Japan, and I was like one of the very first gaijins over there who permanently lived there. So they offered me straight ahead like a a five-year contract and I was like whoa can we first start maybe with two weeks <laughs> and then maybe three <laughs> months and then let's see uh, because I was really terrified I watched a uh, gay girls the documentary about Japan and it was evil and when I arrived in Japan and I first saw the training it was just as you watched on the documentary they were kicking the living yeah <laughs> hell out of each other <laughs> and I was I was like well I don't know if I want this <laughs> Um, and this is actually how I started MMA because the training was so tough, like insane. And I thought, okay, I need to learn more than just wrestling. I need to, you know, protect myself. So that's why I went into MMA. And I promise you, MMA training was more easy than the wrestling training in Japan over there. Wow. Yeah. So that's how hard it was. Um, and back in the days, they didn't speak well English or maybe they don't want to, but it was really hard to communicate communicate with them um but somehow it worked out i made friendship um but most of all i found in my private life my family you know like i found masahiro chono and his wife they adopted me into their family um and i'm their daughter now so i have a wow. real family so that's most important and also i fell in love in japan <laughs> so <laughs> it was a sad love story but I learned so much, you know, because I couldn't speak the language properly. There was, for me, a lot to learn about body language, you know. Um, and, yeah, it made me grow as a human and as a wrestler. So it was it was the most amazing time I had in my life. What a beautiful story. And, <laughs> you know, to have that moment, you know, sharing with your new adopted family as well. And, you know, with stardom, they say that everybody who goes over to Japan uh, comes back a totally different wrestler because you mm. evolve your technique and your styles and you become a different person. Was that the same for you? Did you come back and feel, right, I am now like where I want to be? Absolutely. Well, I personally think you never stop learning, mm. um, but it definitely made me a better wrestler, I think, by myself. I did some matches I never thought I could do. Like, for example, when I won the the, the, the championship Gosh, I love to watch this match back because it was so intense and it was long. Like, I never thought I was capable of doing such a long match, right? So, yeah, I definitely um, gained self-confidence, but I also learned, you know, how to do these and that, how to interact with the fans. So, yeah, it made me absolutely a better wrestler, I think. And you would come out of that much better and you would get a call from WWE. Mm -hmm. First of all, well, tell it me. It took a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you did get it eventually. And how 
what was your emotions when you got that call and you were invited to NXT UK? Well, you know, it was it was a little bit more difficult than that. So 2015, my contract with Japan ended, so they sent me back home. My visa ended, and I was kind of lost. I didn't know what to do. I, I did TNA, and I wasn't really sure about it because, you know, it, there were always rumors about it. It's not so safe with the income and everything. So as a foreigner, you know, moving to another country and then not being sure, will this work out? It was difficult. And I did England already. I moved 2010 to England, so I did that already. So I was like, ah, what do I do? So I went to another WWE tryout, and again, they said no to me. And I was like, ah, man. So and then someone offered me an MMA match, uh, like mixed martial arts. So I went to a place. I trained there for six weeks straight, um, and I had my first MMA match, which I won, and it was amazing. It was like, wow, it, it hurt so much. Don't get me wrong. I had a concussion afterwards, um, and then Japan called me again, but Ryzen, like, it's like one of the biggest uh, MMA promotion in the world, and it was in front of 22,000 um, fans and millions watching on TV, right? I had my second MMA match, and I think this entrance, my intense like everything who I was and also the common commentary from Mauro Ronaldo I think that's his name right <laughs> I have a hard time pronouncing his name and uh, he said something you know which went viral in the wrestling world and I think that gave attention to someone in WWE so then they did the Mae Young Classic and they kind of wanted to represent it from every country kind of so I was the only one in Germany who could represent Germany, right? So they called me. They said, ah, are you free under contract or something? So they said, maybe you can be in the Mayan Classic, right? And I was like, well, maybe it's good enough. Get me in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was there. I was backstage. I had like a 10 days, you know, camp and I had to do the training with them. And I guess they like me. So then I had my, my Mayan Classic match, right? It was insane. It was so electrifying. <laughs> um, and yeah, I thought, to be honest, it's my only wrestling. That's my only match for WWE. I thought, okay, this is it. I will never get a contract. I'm too old. And I don't know. I thought all these things. I thought I would just give my best for this one match and I will enjoy as much as I can. Um, but the fans really liked it. And then the next day, I thought I have a day off. Um, I was, you know, running around, making jokes with my friends. Um, and then Tessa Blanchett came to me and said, hey, Jesse, you need to get ready. You have a match today. I'm like, what? No, I don't. Like, you're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we have like a six-man tag match. I'm like, oh, no. So I had to get ready. You know, we had the match. And it was so funny. So um, the girls came in. I think it was um jesse bell right that's her name then i you know who wasn't there but anyway i was like the fifth person and i was standing backstage and triple h was right next to me and my music hits right and the fans go crazy like whoa i'm looking at him he's looking at me we're like whoa and then i go out and you know my music has like a beat like the first beat i go out the second beat i lift my flag and then the third beat i go out i couldn't hear it they were so loud i couldn't hear my music and wow. i i I wanted to be like serious because I'm alpha female, but I had to smile because I was so overwhelmed. I'm like, what is going on? And they were jazzy, jazzy. I'm like, wow. <laughs> like all these great talents in the ring, like Santana Garrett, um, Tessa Blanchett and Kaylee Ray. And they're chanting my name. Are they crazy? <laughs> so it was amazing. And then they were like half hour. They were like chanting, sign jazzy, sign jazzy. I'm like, wow. And well, then everything was over. I flew home and I was like, whoa. Then I called him like, I think like two days again, I called him, hey, what's up? And they're like, well, there's no opportunity. So we're sorry. And I'm like, oh gosh, like what do I have to do? And then I kind of in my head quit wrestling, you know, because what else can you do, right? Um, but then a contract flew in. Like I had it on my doorbell and I'm like, hey, what's this? And then it was the contract. I'm like, wow. Um, but then they had to fly me into Pittsburgh, you know, I had like doing a checkup and unfortunately my neck was really, really bad. And then they took the contract back. So my doctor said, you can never ever wrestle again. And I was crazy. Everyone said, your career is over. You have to have surgery. And that's about it. I'm like, wow. 
but I'm not a quitter. I'm a fighter. So I fought myself back. And in 2019, I signed a contract with um, WWE again, and they sent me to NXT UK. <laughs> That's <Wow>. how it was. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a story. And you actually... Um... You took one of my bullet points there and told an entire story, which I'm Sorry. so glad. I'm so glad you did. It was the the dark match with Tessa Blanchard and Kaylee Ray. Um, so it was fascinating to hear that story in depth. But you would, uh, whilst making your your time at NXT UK, you also got paired up with Ginny. Uh, mm-hmm. You were the bodyguard, you know, the alpha female, the badass who would throw anyone around just for fun. But mm-hmm. what was that experience like for you, being the bodyguard to somebody like Ginny? Well, you know, sometimes you just cannot um, you cannot control what kind of storyline you get. So you have to be happy, I guess, for everything you get. Like for every single minute on TV, you have to be happy. So I was happy, you know, like you can give me anything. Just let me be on TV, you know, like just let me show the alpha female. And that's what they did. So, yeah. I mean, of course, it could have been a much cooler storyline, but I was really happy. And and Ginny is a great talent, you know, so yeah. why not? You know, like it wasn't the worst. It could have been better, but it wasn't the worst. So it was great experience. <laughs> um, I can hear the phone ringing in the in the uh, hotel. Yeah, that it's you're not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else. <laughs> um and you did still get to wrestle some incredible talent at NXT UK, mm-hmm. including Killer Kelly, Zoya Brookside, Rhea Ripley and Tony Storm. Mm-hmm. Did you manage to learn off those girls and be a part of that roster? Was it just a thrill for you while you were there? Oh, of course. Yeah, I loved every single bit of, of you know, the, the time I had, like, with the TV crew, you know, like, hanging around, like, backstage, um, experience everything. Like, I learned so much, like about you know the timing the, the storytelling like like little things you don't see as a fan you know like all the the, the, the voices in in the ear peers okay look this direction look that direction you know that's so interesting <laughs> and the camera angles and how much money is in there like the technique you know like, I'm really fascinated about that because I want to do my own promotion one day um, I mean I'm actually on it but you know like seeing how a tv show is produced it's so interesting to me uh, and I learned a lot and and of course also wrestling wise like when we did like the UK camps like we have a UK performance center in London um, and I could learn so much from every single one like as a performer I definitely improved like I had great teachers just like Johnny Moss William Regal was many times there I could learn from Shawn Michaels he was there too so I had an amazing time regarding of learning something and it's so it's so nice to hear the way that you speak about your time at WWE but how difficult was the decision for you to leave well, actually, you know, not everything was perfect. Like there were a lot of issues. Like I didn't feel really welcome, especially when it comes to the girls. So that was like a big issue for me, you know, and also there was a money problem. I, I don't think that I earned enough, you know, like not enough to make a good living or let's say to make it worth it that you basically ruin your body again. You know, like especially after after you come off a surgery and I had pain all my life. Like I didn't even know it differently. And after surgery, I woke up with no pain. So I had like one year, absolutely no pain at all. So I was like, wow, this is a new kind of feeling, you know, a new lifestyle. And then going back to training in 2019 and and my body started hurting again here and there, you know, my ankle and then my shoulder and every time something different. And you're like, ah, is it even worth it? Like, Oh, and then for what? For being a bodyguard on TV or I don't know, like it was difficult. Like and there were a lot of decisions. Like I asked if I can go to America because I'm sorry, but I don't like England so much <laughs> because <laughs> it's raining all the time and it's kind of dirty. <laughs> and it's, I don't know. You're not wrong. <laughs> I, really, I really wanted to go to America, but they say it's not possible. And then I had also other um, opportunities in Germany. You know, like I was on tour with a rock star in 2019 and they told me I can do this again in 2020. So there was a lot of business decision I have to take, you know, and counting one and one together. And I was not 100 percent happy, you know, in NXT UK. So I thought, OK, maybe it's not my place to be yet. Maybe it's time to move on. And, you know, 
we might miss you off TV, but you're doing so well at the moment. You've got lots of different ventures. You've mentioned your own wrestling promotion there. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about this because you're starting to put plans together, uh, you know, regarding Sirius and other things. So talk to me about what's going on with your own promotion right now. So uh, I planned out uh, my own promotion in January. Like on, on December, I was sitting together with my friends and we're like, you know what, start our own promotion. And I already had a name for it because I always daydreamed about it. And I was like, why not do it now? And keep in mind, it was before Corona was a thing. <laughs> so we, we booked everything. We bought a really super expensive, awesome belt from Top Rope Belts. It looks amazing. Um, we booked the flights, we booked the wrestler, we booked the freaking venue, it's huge. Um, we booked the camera team, but then Corona hit us and we had to postpone the show from like it had to happen in April, um, but everyone had to cancel here in Germany. So now it's set on December 5th and I really hope it's going to happen. Um, it's going to be different. Like it's not a typical wrestling show because typical wrestling shows we have all over the place, right? And I need to do something different. So my show will be more like a musical. So my show will be on a stage, like not that you sit around it. Like it's like a cinema, you look at it and the venue will be like really like, it's a theater, you know, like everything is gold and red. And that will be also my um, theme forever. It will be like royal, you know, like I have these huge, amazing thrones that were so expensive. They're in my office now. And every time I do like an interview, everyone's like, what's the throne behind you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, the ring will be on the stage and there will be singers, there will be dancers and everything will be more focused on the entrances of the wrestlers. So I want gimmicks. Like, I want, you know, like a Mexican with a mask and everything. Then I want, like, like Brad Bones, John Klinger, for example. He's my macho man, you know. And I want this kind of style. I am, my new gimmick is to be an alien. So I will have, like, alien sound. And, and it will be so crazy. Um, and, of course, the wrestling is important, too. But it's not, like, the main thing. Because I want to go to mainstream. So in my first venue, it has, like, 800 seats. So it's it's a high goal, but yeah. I believe I can do it. I think I can do it. <laughs> Absolutely. The concept sounds fascinating. I really can't mm-hmm. wait to, to hear more. Are there anywhere at the moment that people go and check out? You know, is there anywhere online that you've got things going yeah, on at the moment? Like- like we have a like a promo tournament like it was the promos but we are already at the final so next week the finals is gone but that was super successful so i had like 16 wrestlers um and they spoke in german so you cannot really understand it but it was amazing i tell you um <laughs> and they were like cutting promos on each other and we had like this one famous german guy he's a rap rapper rapper yeah that's the name um and he uh, also been in the jury you know um and yeah we're now in the finals we have bad bones john klinger maybe you know him he sometimes wrestles in the uk uh and the guy called blackwell and he's amazing like you guys need to check him out like he's really good and i think if i force him he will do a promo in english <laughs> you can understand. um but you know katharina waters right like winter mm. from tna she was in my tournament too because she speaks amazingly german so, yeah, so you can check it out on Zerios, like the star, Zerios, S-I-R-U-S, Zerios Sports Entertainment on Instagram. And, yeah, we're also on Facebook and Twitter, but most active on Instagram. Wow, incredible. I love the the concept. It sounds fascinating. As a person who's a, a fan of theatre and wrestling, it's just both merged into one, which is, which is perfect. Yeah, yeah. I definitely need to check that out. You you mentioned TNA a few times during this interview. We, obviously, you were there uh, for a short time. Um, what was your experience like in that locker room in comparison to the likes of WWE? Well, man, it's so long ago. That was like 2013. I only can remember good things. It was amazing. And I remember Kurt Angle was there, and I'm a big Kurt Angle fan. <laughs> so... <laughs> I only can remember him. <laughs> no, but seriously, everything was cool. I, I learned also a lot. That was like my th- first time to do like TV stuff. So it was amazing. And uh, I'm still in contact with Dilo Brown. Like he gives me a lot of advice, you know, if it comes to gimmick work, camera work, even like with my promotion. So yeah, I only have good experiences from it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, before we, we close this out, have you got any mm-hmm. aspirations to continue your acting on the big screen? Can we see you in movies and action films in the future? 
Oh yeah, that for sure. Like I did a big thing in Italy like last week. I'm really curious how this will turn out. Um, I know there will be like four million viewers, so that's like mainstream stuff. So I'm really looking forward how this turns out. Um, yeah, and I'm doing here in Germany more TV work. Like I'm trying and trying. Um, I want to go into movies. That would be awesome. But I think I'm not done yet with wrestling. So I think there's a little bit more to come. Maybe we can get you back over to the UK at some point. Yeah, hopefully, when the stupid hopefully. virus is going away. Please yeah. wear your mask and everything can go away. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Jazzy, this has been so much fun. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I know you're incredibly thank busy you and you're <laughs> traveling all over the world. Um, Is there anything else you want to plug? This is your moment to just talk about whether it's merch, films, anything. Just go for it. Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for all your support all well over the time and that you hear this interview. Um, and if you would love to support me, I'm on Patreon. I'm having there like a diary. I will speak every day what I'm doing so you can read a lot. If you're more into pictures, go to Instagram. I'm really active on there. Um, if you want merchandise, go to SL Wrestling or to ProWrestlingTees.com. Thank you so much for having me and hopefully see you down the road at any show.